What's going on guys, it's Henry back with another video. And in this video, we're going to be discussing small account strategies for turning a little bit of money into a bigger amount of money. Many people have the goal of growing a small portfolio. And today I have three different strategies for you, specifically taking $10 into $250 or even just scaling up with a couple hundred bucks into a four figure amount, you know, really aiming for that high 25 X return. Let's first of all, start with Palantir. I want to show you something really interesting and really new. So with Palantir, what I'm looking at right now is an indicator, the Ichimoku cloud. And essentially, uh, Palantir has been inside this cloud for some time. Now, of course, if you're watching this video in the future, you can still apply the same principles of these three strategies that I'm going to show you today to the future. OK, so taking a look, it's inside the cloud. And for me, what that means is it's likely to continue trading within a specific range. So I've done a lot of research into Palantir. Obviously, it is a good company long term, but in the short term, I do think it's going to stall out. And specifically, if I go to the indicator RSI, we're also going to take a look that the RSI is somewhere in between 20 and 80. So no, I believe that Palantir is going to stall out for the short term. Now, if a company like Palantir is going to stall out, there's actually a phenomenal strategy where you can make tons of money. And I mean, 25 X return. So let's open up this position. It's going to be a little bit complicated. And I will warn you that this strategy is a bit harder to manage. There's a whole lot to it. However, if you get it right, obviously there is some really, really huge rewards. So what I'm going to first do is I'm going to go to uh, sell. I'm going to sell a $15 call option. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a call option. I'm going to go down lower. OK, so I'm going to go down into the 13 and a half strike right here. And I'm also going to go up into the 16 strike right here. Now, this is going to look a little bit weird because the position setup is not ready. And basically what I'm doing right here is this 15 strike is actually the anchor. It's the top of the Christmas tree, if you will, is the very peak of where you think this stock is going to trade. And I picked 15 again, because when I look at the technical analysis, I really think that Palantir is going to stay within the cloud right now. So if I go to custom order and I go to uh, customize, you want to make sure that you have an equal amount of cells for each buy. So I'm going to have two cells and then uh, obviously there's a buy at 13 and a half and then they buy at 16. Now you'll see right here, that the return potential is uh, pretty interesting at $66, but the maximum loss is 84. Now, I didn't necessarily expect this because typically you want a really favorable risk to reward ratio here. So all that means is I'm going to move up and I'm going to play around and you'll see that you can actually do a lot of playing around with this strategy. Now, if I go to 14 and a half, you'll see now how um, and let me actually take the 16 down to uh, 15 and a half. Um, you'll see now that I can turn $10 into uh, $40, um, or, you know, $11 into $39. And that's basically by playing around and getting more specific with where the stock is going to end. OK, the more you open it up, of course, um, you know, you have a more a certain return because uh, it's going to be wider here. Your green profit zone is going to be higher. But if you want to make a bigger bet on a very specific price target, then uh, the return can be, you know, really, really large and specifically, again, turning $10 into 40. Now, um, with this strategy, if you're turning $10 into 40 once per week, I mean, that's turning uh, $10 into 160 once per month. And, you know, in just two months, you're going to be well into turning $10 into $300. So um, I'm just saying you're not going to have uh, the ability to perfectly do this. It takes some management because essentially you're not always going to close here at the peak. I mean, that's pretty silly. You're not going to be able to do that. But in one year, if you are uh, doing this strategy properly, um, there's some really huge returns that can happen, especially if you are right about your technical analysis. Now, of course, you're going to want to use multiple indicators. You know, that could be the Bollinger Band, um, which I teach on this channel all the time and RSI and uh, specifically the cloud that I'm showing you right now. So in one year, this strategy could take $10 into $250. And essentially you're aiming for um, a profit area right around here, right at $15. But even if Palantir stays uh, currently where it's at, you're going to see a pretty uh, handsome profit of around uh, 20 bucks. And then even if it overshoots a little bit, you're still going to see, you know, uh, in $25 area, $20 worth of profit. So you're going to see some really good profits as long as it doesn't go outside this area of uh, 1540 on, on the break even and then 1460. Now, the next stock I want to talk about in the next uh, strategy is going to be uh, NEO. So taking a look at NEO, uh, NEO is actually in a very interesting position because 
Uh, the stock has gone up a lot. Um, you know, in, in terms of the Ichimoku cloud, it's been above the cloud for, for a long time. And for me, um, it's had a recent pullback and now it's still it's still above. So well, what I think is going to happen here is that NEO is going to stay in its uh, bullish trajectory. I think NEO is going to continue to go up. And uh, for this reason, it's actually a very interesting trade. So if I go to uh, trade NEO options, I'm going to show you a, a very interesting uh, put combination okay this is going to be a put combination now let's just say that we're going to go out a little bit further in terms of dates okay you don't have to do short-term trading i'm a fan of weekly trading but i'm also a big fan of monthly trading i think if you are uh, getting either one down um, the time period isn't as important because you know whether you're making easy income you know per week or uh, per month it's still the most important thing is still making income on a weekly or a monthly period and in my, my personal opinion is as an option trader it's just very important for me to be profitable it's important for me to aim for the proper profit target um, i want a good really good payoff and then you know really important i want to make sure that i'm being smart with my uh, risk management because if you don't have the proper risk management you end up losing a bunch of money i mean that's no good right rule number one is don't lose money so let me go ahead and uh, go into a uh, sell put option to get started here. Again, this is going to be a little bit complicated, but just follow along. Okay, take some notes. So check it out. I think that NEO is going to go up. It has um, a bullish skew to it. And I think that the momentum is going to rise in the next, uh, you know, roughly two weeks. Again, you can apply the same principles and the same logic uh, into the future with other stocks if you wish. But, you know, for me, it's, it's pretty clear that uh, NEO is, uh, is, is a pretty good stock. In the short term, I expect it to go up about a dollar. So I think it's going to end at roughly $12 per share. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to sell a put option here. And then again, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, you know, buy some things around this area that I'm creating. So uh, the 12 strike, I'm going to go ahead and buy 11. And then I'm going to go ahead and buy the 13. I'm just going to play around with this because uh, one of the keys here is you want to make a custom order. You want to obviously have, uh, you know, two cells for each buy. And uh, as you can see right here, this is an even more favorable trade. I mean, yes, you're betting on it really ending towards 12. But I mean, just check it out. $17, uh, turning it into $83. Uh, you know, the return here is basically a 4x return in 11 days. So, you know, obviously you can turn $10 into you know, some insane amounts of money, even with small amounts of capital, if you're right on this strategy multiple weeks in a row. Now, I will say that this strategy is a lot harder to scale up and my bread and butter is still going to be selling puts, covered calls in the wheel, which I cover on this channel all the time. But a strategy like this is really ideal for small portfolios that have a lot of certainty. And if you pick the right stock and you're really certain about a uh, the direction of the stock and a specific price point, you don't have to be exactly correct. Obviously, again, you're not going to sell it at $12 per share. Um, you know, that might not happen because that's kind of like a lottery ticket. But if it starts to go up towards expiration here, you're going to see a really nice profit. I mean, if you're up $40, you put in 17, you're up, you know, basically more than 2x, then this makes sense to cut the position early. I mean, if in two days you double your money, I would be cutting this position. I don't have to hold until expiration. Now, if it is going up though, and I think it's gonna continue going up and it's gonna go towards my, um, you know, my max profit right here, my expected profit, um, the maximum amount of $83. If it's in this range and I'm up $70, that's even better, right? And even if it overshoots, that's cool. Now, of course, if it's going to the opposite direction and it happens, you know, after three, four days, I would not want to hold this position until expiration because then I have a risk of losing this entire amount that I'm putting up. And if I see a 50% decline, $9, I'm going to cut the position. But more often than not, if I did my homework correctly and I see this uh, position going up, you know, I'm risking $9 because I'll have, you know, I don't want to say stop loss because I don't love stop losses, but I'll manually take a look at this position. And if I'm down about $9, I'll end up closing it, right? If it goes down, but if it goes up, I'm only going to take profit if I'm up $20 or even $40. So my uh, risk is roughly $9, but my reward is roughly 40. Now, the third strategy that I wanna go over is going to be on Tesla. Tesla is a really popular stock, of course. And if I take a look at the cloud here, uh, Tesla is on the bottom range. So it's a little bit, you know, potentially gonna be bearish. I don't know if it's gonna break trajectory or not. Um, you know, if I take a look at some other factors, so let me get rid of the cloud. I actually wanna take a look at the Bollinger Band, which is a very common metric that I use. The period is gonna be 20 days. Okay, this is standard and the standard deviation is two. Okay, two, make sure that's that's really important, okay? But that is the standard on Yahoo Finance. So you'll notice right now that uh, Tesla's actually in the middle of its Bollinger Band. Uh, I mean, it's right in the center. So again, I think this stock is gonna uh, end up going sideways. 
And you know, one of the most perfect strategies to run is gonna be the iron condor strategy. Now, if you focus here, I think this is one of the best strategies that you can use ongoing. Because the first two strategies are quite hard to manage, except um, this third strategy, the iron condor, is not that hard. I think it's literally one of the best. So the way I typically start an iron condor is I go to sell, uh, put option. Okay, I'm gonna go out for, uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with doing 30 days to expiration or even more than that. So I'm gonna go to October 20, okay? I'm gonna pick October 20. Um, again, if you're watching this in the future, not a big deal. I like to go for uh, monthly iron condors, monthly spreads. You know, nothing wrong with that. It actually gives me um, less to manage. And, you know, managing strategies is really important. How you manage your position makes, you know, the biggest difference between getting good returns and getting, you know, not so good returns. And going 30 days out lets me actually relax, monitor the position, and, um, you know, just make sure nothing goes wrong. But in most cases, I just wait until expiration. I just let it expire. Now, just notice right here, the bottom of the Bollinger Band is 243. So that's going to be my strike selection, okay? So in terms of picking a strike and expiration day, okay, I'm, you know, expiration day, 30 to 60 days out is fine. But, you know, taking a look at uh, the strike price, 243. I mean, right here. Simple as that, okay? The Bollinger Band is doing it for me. So 243 is the bottom of the Bollinger Band, okay? It's quite interesting, actually, because uh, let me actually just refresh here. I don't know why this says 260. Something's really weird. So let me go ahead and refresh this real fast because I have a feeling that 243 is uh, is incorrect. So I'm going to refresh the screen right now. And yes, that was indeed correct. OK, so 215 is actually what I'm looking at. OK, that's really important. You don't want to just look at a chart and say, hey, that, that's what it is. You also want to verify refresh, obviously. So 215, I knew something was wrong there. So 215, OK. Uh, I'm going to go down to 215. If I expand 215, you'll see that the delta is 0.27. So uh, 27 delta implied volatility is 55. That's really good, you know. Anything over 40 is high. Obviously, you don't want to go above 100. That's too high, but 55, very good. And the volume is 244. Really good open interest as well. And the bid-ask spread is, is very tight on, on Tesla. So that's a good thing, right? I'm looking for a tight bid-ask spread. The wider this is, you know, the more money you're really losing to slippage, right? So uh, I'm going to start off with uh, selling the two, 215 here. Now, this strategy is selling the 215. And then I'm just going to go ahead and buy the next leg down, which is going to be the 210. So I'm going to go ahead and buy the 210. This is just a put credit spread and iron condor, just really a combination of, of uh, put credit spreads and call credit spreads. So 215, 210. Now I'm going to go ahead and, and uh, you know, sell a call option. All right, so I'm gonna go up for the call option and let's just take a look at the Bollinger Band again. The top is 264, so pretty easy. I'm just gonna go for 265. Uh, 33 Delta is a little bit high here, but uh, again, um, you know, that's the Bollinger Band. The Bollinger Band is based on statistics. So I'm gonna go ahead and sell the 265. Then I'm gonna go ahead and buy the 270. Now I'm gonna discuss the risk and return, okay? So the max loss is only 227. OK, but the max profit is 273. So you have a very favorable profit to loss ratio. And honestly, if uh, Tesla bounces around in this green zone, then it doesn't matter. You're going to see a, you know, a profit on your hands. And the only way you would see a uh, loss is if it went down below 212 or above uh, 267. Now, the iron condor strategy is one of my favorite strategies because, you know, the market could go up, it can go down. You're still going to be making money. What's also really important about taking profit on the iron condor is if it's in the green area, you don't actually need to take profit. You can just keep waiting because as you wait, time decay and theta keeps eating away at the option and making your position more profitable so you can wait until expiration. Now, if it goes out of hand and it hits one of your um, break even points right here, then you have to make a really big decision. Do you want to close this position? Because um, you can absolutely close this position and see a small loss because that's much better then, you know, seeing momentum really go, you know, to the downside or really to the upside, and then you end up losing the full amount that you pay. So for me, I am a big fan. If I see the momentum shifting and it ends up in one of these red areas, I'm going to be looking to cut this position actively. And I'm going to, again, be using my technical indicators to see, should I cut my losses or should I keep holding this position and hope that it goes back into this green area? And of course, in this green area, I don't even need to take profit because I just wait until expiration. If you want hands-on help to see all my trades, to get my coaching, and actually to be part of a zero DTE group, then make sure you hit that first link in the description and find out more about my program. And if you want another video about these exact strategies, then check out this video on the screen right now.